can take your own notes to the Central Bank of Nigeria, any branch of the Central Bank of Nigeria, and you have 37 uh, branches of the Central Bank of Nigeria, that's in 36 states, and in the Federal Capital Territory, that's a 7 out of 3. I think there's headquarters in Abuja, though you have a central bank, Abuja, a branch. But I guess to be joining me shortly to take a look at that. But before that also, I will be talking about uh, the state of tech in Africa. Our tech cabal insights came up with a report, and that report did show us uh, that, that uh, investment into the tech uh, sector I was higher in 2022 than in 2021. My guest will be joining me shortly also to take a look at that. But we will get started very quickly. All you need to do right now is to join us on all our social media platforms. If you are not following us on the different social media handles, please do well to start following us right now on Instagram, on Facebook, on uh, LinkedIn, on which Join again on Twitter, then you uh, subscribe to our channel on YouTube at Moneyline with Nancy at TV. Let's quickly take a break. When we come back from the break, I will be chatting with my first guest to stay. inclusion um I, I feel that there has to be like uh, a more related touch point for them like uh, things like agency banking which already exists today right but um we don't really work on agency banking so uh, we don't know how far you understand this kind of association or relationship actually can be built but i know uh that's based on the um limits you stand at uh, the limit per day uh, i feel uh there's still, uh, there should still be some uh privilege of what uh some of the agency banks actually give out to people. I don't know uh, the size of what it is that they have for the, I think the uh, case of the demand uh, that is required out there. So um, I think um, this kind of direction is what actually helps get to where we need to be as a country, right? Um, and also uh, make sure that uh, nobody is left behind, uh, just like you said, the Malaysian uh, uh, student. The truth untold. We restore democracy. We initiated due process. We created the EFCC and ICPC. We brought Nigeria out of debt by achieving $18 billion worth of relief and $30 billion overall reduction. We revived the rail system. We upgraded agriculture. We brought in the mobile phone and digitalized Nigeria. Under the PDP, the Nigerian economy was the strongest in Africa. Though Nigerians made their choice, today we all know better. Hmm. Nigerians do not despair. Hope is in the horizon. We are putting in the work in refreshing our drive to rescue and rebuild Nigeria. Together, let's make it happen. PDP. Power. 
to the people. All right, welcome back to the program. In case you're just joining us, this is uh, Moneyline with Anansi on African Independent Television. Like I said at the beginning of the program, uh, my guest, first guest is here, Olari Waju Oduno, who is the head tech cabal insights. And we're looking at the st state of tech in Africa. Hello, Olari Waju, and uh, thanks for joining me today. How are you? Uh, I'm very well, thank you. Um, I'm getting credit. Okay, fantastic. Now let's get started with uh, this interview. The report which you spearheaded at Tech Cabal, uh, you of course you had uh, uh, Tech Cabal Insights. Speak to me about what that report is about. I know that this is for Q4 2022. You had Q1, Q2, Q3, then Q4. Just give our viewers a sense of the tech ecosystem in 2022. Give us a sense of what happened. In the ecosystem in 2022. Thank you. Um, so pretty much, it was a mixed bag, really. Oh, um, we had some good deals, and like some good things that happened. So tech startups raised more money um, than 2021, which was a good one. Um, however, we did see quite a number of um, layoffs. You know, basically people losing their jobs. As the last time we counted, there were over 1,000 layoffs, um, you know, and pretty much investors, despite the fact that there were more deals, we saw um, some conversations being cancelled. So some investment deals were cancelled because of the, the slowdown in, in, in VC funding. Um, we saw more startups go, go for debt deals, which is pretty much um, loans. In, in simple terms, you know, so debt was like the highest um, by funding stage, about somewhere around 23.5 million. Um, and then grants was also a big, a big part of funding. Um, so we didn't see as, as much equity deals um, mm. as we've seen in other years. Um, you know, or, or basically, we did see, you know, quite a number of deals. You know, but like a lot of um, conversations from the equity, equity standpoint were kind of pretty much. Um, so that's that's really a roundup of the space. Um, fintech, obviously, with no surprises, remains the most funded sector. Um, the top four countries, Nigeria, Egypt, South Africa, continue to maintain their and Kenya continue to maintain their position. Um, and we did see acquisition deals rise. And that's because a lot of um, most likely because some startups could not raise funding, um, so they were looking to get acquired, or people who had 
ongoing funding conversations. Those conversations were cut off pretty much. Yeah. Okay, so from your explanation, uh, because of the economic conditions in 20 uh, 22, it pretty much uh, affected the, the ecosystem in Africa. But um, I, I really want to ask you this question, which is around yeah. uh, the Jaguar syndrome, which we pretty much saw or which we're seeing so far, even in Nigeria. I don't know to what extent it's affecting other African countries. Um, what is the impact of the migration, the migration pressure that we've seen in Nigeria on the tech ecosystem? Oh yeah, it's 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 been tough. Um, companies are struggling to to hire talent. They're losing, you know, key talent, um, and I mean that is also forcing some companies to begin to look outside of their own country for talent. Um, you know, but it, it's 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 getting tougher to to find great talent. Pretty much, it's getting tougher to find great talent. Okay, so from your report, the top four investment hubs or destinations, countries, which you mentioned earlier, Nigeria, South Africa, Kenya, and Egypt. Out of these four countries, which of the four are topped uh, for uh, talking about funding? Where did, which country did funding come into mostly out of the, the four countries in 2022? Ola, can you hear me? Um, okay. I mean, from from my from my research, um, the most funded was um, Egypt, I believe. Um, yeah, that was the most funded country, and followed by Nigeria. Um, sorry, Nigeria was the most funded country, um, then followed by um, followed by Kenya, pretty much. So Nigeria continues to maintain its its position. And I think one of the big deals that we saw was uh, was Flutter Wave um, raising, uh, I think, about 250 million, if my figure is not wrong. Um, but yeah, so Nigeria continues to to lead the back. I mean, depending on 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 which report you look at, because um, different research have different um, research method methodology. But um, I think everyone would agree um, that the four countries continue to to lead and maintain uh, you know their position okay um well, let's quickly talk about uh, the layoffs that we saw last year from your report uh you indicated that that over a thousand tech employees lost their job in africa's bearish tech uh, market the tech workers were laid off last year as africa's tech industry faced a funding drought after years of increased investment to start up countries across the continent is there an idea of perhaps what the 1000 uh, employees that were laid off are actually doing now or are they part of the people that perhaps migrated outside the shores of africa um i think i mean just from um it, Again, just 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 from my observation, uh, I think some some of them are putting jobs, uh, you know, with with other companies who were trying to snap them up. Um, so jobs with other companies, but sure, because it was it was um, it was a, most most of it was very sudden from the reports that we got. Most of it was was very sudden. Um, but yeah, what we're seeing is companies that couldn't afford them earlier. You know, can now like snap up those talents. Um, but it's tough to say. Let me, yeah, because we haven't done like deep research into what everyone is doing right now. You know, but there's just um, some of them are migrating, like you said. Um, some of them, you know, have been uh, have been snapped up by smaller companies. I couldn't afford them earlier, so they're probably got some remote jobs. You know, but all of this is just uh, assumptions based on um, observation. Yeah. Okay. It's tough to say. Mm. Okay, what's your outlook for this uh, sector? What's your outlook for this ecosystem in 2023 as we end the interview? What's the outlook this year? Is this still going to be a bit difficult like we saw in 2022? Or does a kind of ray of light? Um, 
I think it's 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 likely going to get bad before it gets better. Um, I think the first half of the year, everybody will just sit it out and try to watch what's going to happen. I was reading a report the other day that um, the global tech companies are performing better um, now, you know, um, but it's, it's so early to say, which, which is why I'm saying it's, it's going to get worse before it gets better. We might see things get better in the second half of the year as companies adjust and basically adjust to, to, to the realities um pretty much um but my prediction is that it's, it's gonna get bad if i guess better mm. it's gonna get bad before it gets better because we've even seen companies like microsoft announcing that it will lay uh, uh, off like ten thousand workers amazon and all these big companies even those in silicon valley is not really looking so bright at this exactly. time so it's gonna get bad before it gets exactly. better all right thank you very much Alar, yeah. Alar, for joining me on today's edition of the program thank you uh, let's speak soon. Thanks. Thank All right. Thank I've, been, I've been speaking with uh, Larry Wadju Aduno, who is the head tech cabal insights, and we've been talking about uh, the state of Africa's uh, tech uh, markets. The outlook from uh, Ola and his team is going to get bad before it gets better. All right, let's quickly take a break. And when we return from the break, break my next guest will be joining me. Justin Chukwu is the Group Managing Director at Carry Asset Management. We will be taking a look at the issues surrounding the Naira redesign policy. Just a few days to the deadline. How prepared are we? This hardship that Nigerians are facing, what can be done to ameliorate this hardship? We will be right back after the break to join us again. <music> Here is a new and refreshing offer for our esteemed audience across the globe. The new AIT Cloud TV is an online streaming service that offers you attractive opportunities to view our rich, exciting, and entertaining programs anytime, anywhere. AIT Cloud TV is available on the web on www.ait.app, Apple TV, Amazon Fire TV, Roku, and Android TV. You can also download the mobile app from the Google Play Store or the Apple App Store. Simply connect to the internet, download the app, register and watch live or catch up on unlimited hours of exciting shows. AIT Cloud TV. TV on the go. As you could see the uh, okay, Chief Johnson Chuku. <laughs> <laughs> Johnson Chuku, the G group managing director at Akari Asset Management is here with me at the table. Good morning and uh, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning, Chief Nancy. <laughs> <laughs> welcome again to the program. It's been a while physically on the show. Yes, we're enjoying the benefit of technology. Yes, we are. We are. Things are going to change, isn't they? We are quite uh, hopeful. We are quite, uh, quite optimistic. Mm. Okay. Let's get into the, into the nitty-gritty. The Naira redesign policy, I don't know if I've spoken to you about it since uh, the 
policy announcement from the Central Bank of Nigeria. What do they, what do you think? Or oh, perhaps we've even gone past that because the new Naira is out. <laughs> Talk to me about your reading of the situation so far. You are from Lagos. You came in from Lagos today. Talk to me about the situation. Well, the situation in Lagos is quite uh, there. Um, a lot of people are queuing at the POS terminals trying to make withdrawals. Um, banks are not paying over the counter. Uh, but interestingly, uh, somehow, Lagosians seem to have accepted the reality of the current situation. Uh, we're not seeing um, the sparks uh, you have seen in some other, other places in Lagos. And given that Lagos account for more than 40 billion economic activity in the country, so if Lagos could be managed, uh, then other areas could reasonably be managed. Uh, and I think what the, the banks need to do is try to provide as much as they, are, they have provided in Lagos. It doesn't need, I mean, in terms of proportion of dem demand to, su um, to supply. Uh, like I said, Lagos account for about more than 40 million of economic activities. And to a reasonable extent, Lagos has remained calm. Um, it's not smooth selling, but I don't think the tensions I've seen in places like where I was in Uri last weekend or some other places is that it's in Lagos. So somehow, the Gaussians seem to have adjusted to the reality of the current situation. And also, I think people are beginning to accept that it's, it's a, a short-term um, pain that we're going through and that uh, maybe in the next two weeks uh, or three weeks' time, we should see some level of improvement. Okay. Quick things from what you said, and I hope that my brain can keep up with what you said to take off follow-up questions. You did actually say that banks are not paying over the counter. Are they not doing that now despite the order, the direction from the Central Bank of Nigeria to start paying over the counter 20,000 naira to individuals? Well, I can say from uh, personal experience, I actually asked uh, one of my staff to go to the bank yesterday to make a withdrawal and uh, he spoke to about three or four banks and um, they told him they are not still paying over the counter. Over the counter? Yes, I can tell that for, uh, for, for sure. That the four or, four or three or four banks we spoke with yesterday said they were not yet paying over the counter. And, um, but I know the central bank has given instructions mm -hmm. to the banks to pay over the counter. Probably those banks have not gotten enough supply. Uh, but I, there's also what they call lag effect in economic policies. The uh, banks have not gotten enough supply, but they are also supplying their ATMs. You get what I'm saying? Yes. They are not paying over the counter, but they are loading their ATMs. And from what we have seen, at least from the videos recorded by even some staff of the CBN, when they go out for monitoring, they, a lot of banks hoard millions of naira in their vaults. Okay, let me put it this way. Um, the banks were initially directed to pay only through the ATMs. Mm -hmm. And what they did was mobilize their resources to load the ATMs. Uh, because once the ATMs are not loaded, you're going to have difficulties uh, paying people there. So, and again... Uh, as it relates to over-the-counter uh, payments, remember that the banks don't have an infinite amount of cash supply, new currency supply. So um, one of the things they must have done is to prioritize where the customers are really uh, making contact. Uh, and I think the ATMs uh, seem to be the areas where the customers are making their first set of contacts. But that does not excuse the fact that um, they are still reluctant to pay over the counter. But my summation of this thing is that some of the, like what you mentioned about banks trying to hold new mm -hmm. currencies because they don't have enough supply. Um, it's very simple. You can only hold a product that is scarce. Nobody holds a product that is in, in large supply where supply has strips okay. demand. So okay, clearly, okay. this is uh, uh, what you call uh, unethical behavior, if you have to call it unethical behavior, is driven by the fact that there is not enough supply. But the reason why there's no, not enough supply is a different thing which we are going to go into mm -hmm. in the course of our conversation. Um, but in terms of if we are dwelling only on the economics, there's clearly short supply of the new in currencies. Nara. The motive behind that is what we have to interrogate and weigh the benefit of that motive against the cost or the difficulties we are going through. Okay, let, let's, let's take off from that I get you, and I'm trying to wrap my head around what you're saying because you're saying you would have a shortage of, of something if there's no adequate supply. About the motive around making... I said you had 
You can only have hoarding yes. when there's not enough supply. Yes, I know. I, I had you right. But how about the motive around what the banks are doing now? They will not be paying customers over the counter. Their ATMs are not loaded. But bank officials, Apex bank officials, go into the banks and they see new monies in their vaults. So, yes. <laughs> so, what is the motive around profiteering? So, the motive around... Guys, let's make profits from this and let's hoard this to make profit from it. When that's limited is some basic... I can, I can decide yeah. that I want to make something scarce, yeah, even if it's, let if me, it's well supplied. Let, let me tell you something about uh, some basic uh, business nuggets. Whenever a product or a commodity is in short supply, then that product will find itself in the temporary market. And human beings are rational. Patriotism or ethics do not drive business. Profit motive drive business interest. So when you create a situation where demand is higher than supply, they will certainly be profiteering. So what we are seeing today is that the situation has created an incentive for unethical behavior, which is why Maybe you go to a, 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 a bank branch, an unethical operations or cash officer will have made an arrangement with maybe a big political heavyweight and say, look, if you bring me uh, 10 million naira, I'll give you back 100 million, 1 million naira. So the guy, because he's, he has seen an incentive, his negative attributes come to the fore. But what I'm uh, trying to explain is that it doesn't excuse unethical behavior. But I'm saying certain situations create environments for unethical behavior. Mm. It doesn't excuse the unethical behavior, but we must recognize that, look, we have short supply of foreign um, local currencies, new uh, currency, uh, new notes, and it has created situations where some people who do not have strong moral uh, fiber are behaving in an unethical manner. But one of the things I want us to focus on is these difficulties we are going through, is it going to, in the medium to long term, create an environment that we can look back and say, okay, we went through these difficulties for two weeks or three weeks, but we, have, we now have an environment in a country where economy is progressing, where people have employment, where there is no need for anybody to go to a banking hall to give for cash. Where people earn income, have enough uh, uh, this, uh, full employment. And that, that for me, uh, because when I look back, I was among the earliest people that said, look, the currency did them read, 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 read denomination. Mm, yeah, redesign. Mm -hmm. And the limits to withdrawals we are inherently political. And we are designed to achieve an objective, and that objective is likely to, as much as possible, reduce the influence of money in the electoral process. But the Apex Bank doesn't say, didn't say so. They don't have to say so. If they say so, they would have compromised their own uh, neutrality. Uh, but clearly, I mean, you don't need to be a rocket scientist to see the sequence of uh, policies that have come out of the central bank and the fact that the central bank governor is clearly on the same bed with the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And if you want to, if you catch your mind back, when the Minister of Finance said, look, she wasn't briefed, she wasn't aware of this, immediately the president weighed in. And the president has spoken more on this narrative design than he has spoken on any subject since he became president. So why do you think the president, who is known to, to speak barely hardly speak on any issue to have spoken granted several interviews on this intervene whenever he needed and to he, intervene he did the same thing when he was also a military thank you military, so uh, clearly I, 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 what, what i and I, I from this point the announcement was made I said, look, clearly what we are looking at is that we've had successions of elections and in almost all the elections we have cried ourselves hawks 
saying that the nation has become compromised. Not necessarily because the results are written, but also because people who have then become uh, popularized by the political leaders are giving peanuts so that they can vote against their country, against national interest. And today, there's so much excitement about the electoral process. A lot of young people are excited, they want to go and vote. You could see the energy of people when they wanted to register to vote. You have seen the energy of people who are trying to collect their voters' card. And then, but we also know that in spite of that, there is a threat that since poverty has been weaponized, and people get handouts to compromise. I mean, if you look at a woman who has four children, who does not have an income, her husband does not have a job, and the woman is giving uh, 10,000 naira to vote for any candidate, irrespective of who the candidate is, the woman must be a very strong personality with a strong moral fiber to reject that 10,000 naira and not vote to that person. So, but if you now, because of the need to have a sane electoral system, election, the federal government, the President Muhammad Buhari, decided that, look, we're going to change the, the currency design and we're going to limit withdrawals so that we constrain politicians who are bent on compromising the entire country from doing that. I think that's the premise that we have to look at it. For me, that, and I had said this earlier, immediately the announcement was made, I said, look, go, to, go to look at this uh, policy. Why would you change the color of your currency a few, way, a few months to the election? Why is the deadline uh, 31st of December? I mean, 31st of January. Mm -hmm. Why was the deadline 31st of January when uh, the election, presidential election was going to be on 25th of February? Why not a few days so after? So is it that the reasons that the Central Bank gave were not strong, cogent mm, reasons? No. That we've not changed our currency in a long time? No, they are uh, logical. They are logical reasons. You understand. And, and the financial reasons surrounding it's counterfeiting and all of that they are not strong enough reasons or the politicians just also took advantage of this okay the apex bank is <laughs> is chasing us it's why do it at this time and all of that why not do we do it at this time okay let me tell you Nancy. and and how is the market even reading it are you telling me what you're reading or perhaps what how the markets are also saying okay this? i'll take it from both yeah. parts uh in the first place the decision to redesign a currency is basically that of the central bank governor with the consent of the president of the federal republic of nigeria the timing is the issue it could have been done early last year it could have been done middle of last year it could also have been done by march ending or april ending but given the length of time the president has been in power eight years and the timing I mean, like I said, it's common logic that one can reasonably deduce that there is a political consideration. It doesn't negate the economic and social considerations. I can dwell on the economic and social considerations and make an overwhelming argument why this redesign should take place. But that will not explain the level of restrictions in withdrawals. The level of restrictions in withdrawals cannot be explained by the need to stop so much cash getting into the system that could enable those who want to compromise the electoral process to do that. And I give you an answer. Let's dwell on what the central bank governor has said, or what the issues that they, what they, said. they talked about counterfeiting. The current notes, the old notes that are being phased out, have been around for quite some time. So if you have a crafty counterfeiter, a fraudster, they would have understood it, all the security features, including those that are not feasible. Uh, visible to the eyes. And they can reasonably duplicate that. So there's a reason that why you could say, over this period, we need to change my, uh, the design of our currency. But it doesn't explain the timing. You can also say that there is a lot of liquidity in the hands of nefarious people in nef engaged in nefarious activities like kidnappers, like drug dealers, or people who are involved in other criminal activities. So if you redesign your currency, but remember you also created a window for those currencies to come back. And from what the central bank government said, the first two weeks, about 1.9 trillion naira of the 2.7 trillion naira that was it's after coming. the banking system came back. So that money, 1.9 trillion naira came back, may also in, have included monies from kidnappers and drug dealers. Mm -hmm. So it does not address that in that. But limiting the amount of money that anybody can withdraw over the counter will make it difficult for anybody to withdraw 10 million naira and go and pay for ransom. 
You are saying, mm -hmm. uh -huh. and I don't see any kidnapper that we kidnap for ransom and ask you to transfer money to my account, because once it, the payment goes through the banking system, it can be tracked Please. and trapped. So by limiting the amount you will withdraw, you can also make it difficult for those who are using this money for uh, criminal activities. But that can also have waited for the after the election, or could have been done earlier than now. The one that is which is why I had to make my deduction, is that the one that has made the time constraint, time limitations, justifiable or explainable is that election, presidential election is going to be happen on the 25th of February. I was speaking with somebody, somebody called me on Saturday, I think on Friday, no, Saturday morning, and was telling me that uh, his master, who is running for governorship in one of the states, uh, went to campaign and they came with that they came with 300 bags of rice. These bags of rice are just as small as my uh, clenched fist. The bags of rice? Rice, with okay. uh, the picture of the candidate emblazoned on, on it. And that people were so jubilant that you see, need to see the way women we are struggling to get those bags of rice. I felt like slapping if it was before me. I said, you guys have really, really pushed people to extreme poverty. And you are enticing them like dogs. And that's what the politicians have done to this country. They've destroyed a the psych of Nigerians. Nigeria has 33% unemployment, 45% youth unemployment. Mm -hmm. And you want to go and give them 10,000 naira to buy their vote for the next eight years. So if that's, like the president said, look, he wants to bequeath to this country a free mm -hmm. and fair election. That is not compromised by money bags or by togre. So if you deny the criminal politicians, because that's what you make, we should call them. The access to the liquidity to compromise the voters and, and also buy the brows of talks. Then we may end up with a clean, reasonable free election. And whatever the outcome of the election, whoever we elect, we will know we have chosen who we are. Because, like I've said, this election has turned to be a, a, a kind of um, proof of who we are. It's a referendum on who Nigerians are. So if we we have choices, and we make our choice, and our choice turns out to be wrong, because the choice is a collective choice. So whatever the majority chooses is the choice of Nigeria. So whatever choice we make, and we make it with the best of uh, sense of responsibility, without being induced or compromised, mm -hmm. then we've elected who we are, now, and we would have gotten the government we deserve. How do you think that with this, the deadline February 10 is just by the corner. February 17 is also by the corner. The central bank governor has come out to say you can bring in your old notes. It doesn't stop. Of course, when he went to the, uh, the National Assembly and met, met with the House of Representatives uh, reps there, how do you think this will affect the election? Because some people are also saying, I don't have cash. There's no cash. It will affect voting, voter turnout. Do, do you think... So, because some people will be like, okay, I don't have money, I'll stay in my house. I mean, need. I've heard different sorts of arguments. Did you see the way I shifted when Yes, you I, 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 I noticed that. <laughs> okay, Nancy, let me tell you. The history of elections since I became, came of, became of adult suffrage is that on election day, movement is restricted. It's restricted, agreed. Nobody enters yes. bus yeah. or tags it go anywhere. You have to vote People vote to you. near A trekking distance. Boots. So anybody who decides he's not going to vote, never wanted to vote. So if you have been eating and suffering for the past eight years, and you have a golden chance to choose the right leader, and you are saying because you don't have 1000 naira or 10000 naira in your pocket, you are going to deny yourself your legitimate responsibility as a citizen. And then you come and cry foul and say, look, a bad government is in power. Then you can only have yourself to blame. Everybody that votes in Nigeria walks to his his or her pulling boot. So it has nothing to do with movement of vehicles. You are not even allowed to go beyond your pulling area. So it can't be an excuse for anybody to say we don't have money. I'm not excusing the fact that we're not going to pay. Now I'm going yeah, to pay. I was and, coming to uh, that. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying that, and I'm also of the opinion that the central bank can do a little more. That's what we I can was increase further to. the volume of cash because I try to uh, do a rough of the back of the envelope analysis. The uh, the deputy governor of central bank had said that they have printed the printed 500 million 
uh, uh, notes of the new colleges. And I said, okay, what could be the proportion of their printing? I said, okay, if they printed 200 million uh, uh, notes of the 1,000 Naira notes, and did another 200 million of the 500 Naira notes, okay, and then do 100 million of the 200 Naira notes, making it the 500 million, she said, they ordered and printed, then they would have printed about 320 billion Naira. Remember, that the central bank governor in making the announcement mm -hmm. on the redesign of the currency had said that we have 3.2 3 trillion naira of, of currency mm -hmm. in circulation yeah. out of which 2.7 trillion was outside the banking system mm -hmm. it was only 500 billion mm -hmm. that was within the banking system mm -hmm. so they printed 320 billion they would have printed i'm just doing a back of them for mm -hmm. because he didn't say exactly how much but i just doing a rough of the uh, a rough estimate they would have printed more than 80 percent i mean more than 60 percent of the volume of cash that was actually being used in this economy without anybody complaining of cash shortage. So, so what you're saying now is that the central bank should bring out more supply of the So Naira. if the central bank has printed, you know the central bank governor has not come out to tell us how much they have pushed out. If they push out 320 billion and we are still having this shortage, then something else is going on. Okay, now let me take it from where, what you said, which I think is very important because at the end of the day right now, Everyone is calling on this, that the central bank needs to fix this. And you think that the central bank should fix this. Yes. How should they fix that? By perhaps the governor coming out to say, this is how much we've printed. What should be done to the bank? Should the central bank of Nigeria be shaming, naming and shaming, and perhaps with the police or EFCC and ICPC, be prosecuting the banks that are okay. supposedly mm. profiteering from this right now? Okay. But that will have to come from, we have to know how much each branch or each bank has been given. Yes. So back to what I was saying. Like I said, what I did was just a, a commonsensical uh, uh, estimation. So if really, and we have now about 320 billion naira in an economy that we're thriving without any hitch we're on 500 billion, that means the central bank has brought in about over 60% of what? Without we, any hitch in cash circulation yes but affecting monetary policy no, you see yes well, uh, yeah, well, yeah. Affecting monetary policy, but uh, yes but yes. affecting monetary yes. policy so what 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 i'm looking at is if they have done about printed about 320 billion the question is have they pushed under 320 billion into the system if they have we shouldn't be having the difficulties we're having so if we're having those difficulties it simply means that any, any every company that was that they were people buying it up for election purpose so we need to also extend our logic to that extent. Because, but then if they have pushed out maybe 50 billion, they may need to put more, put more in the system. And because you really need some level of cash for the effective commercial engagement of mm -hmm. citizens. And one of the recommendations I have, I, 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 I have to for them is that, look, for instance, the over-the-counter payment, the election is just about three weeks away. So you can actually say, instead of limiting the withdrawals at the ATMs to 20,000 naira a day, and withdrawals over the counter, counter at 20,000 naira a day, you can also upscale that to 100,000 naira one off. A day at the ATMs? Well, a week. Okay. 100,000 naira a week. At the ATMs? At the, at the channels. In the other channels. Because you can actually slot your medicine and collect up to 100,000 naira at mm. the ATM machine. So the implication is this. If you have a maximum withdrawal per week of 100,000, whether you want to take it once or want to take it three times. But the policy existing now from the banking system is 500,000 naira a, a, a week? A, uh, no, a, a month. month. It's 500,000 500, naira a week. A, yes. So, so it depends on how the banks yes. regulate it because but, the banks have also sent emails to their customers. It depends on how they regulate yes. it. Yes. So my take is this. Why don't you allow the bank? Of course, the, the issues that you can only withdraw 20,000 naira a, a, a day. day which amounts to 100,000 naira a week at most, because you're not going to go five, seven times a day, mm. a week. A so day what day. you're saying is that increase <coughs> the volume yes. that people can so take at So you're going to limit the number of people coming back so to get to, money every to, day. To every day. And then you still have a hang on how much money that is pushed out. And I can also tell you that 80 people who go to ATM to make withdrawal do not have 500,000 naira in their account. Yeah. According to NDI, they don't even have 200,000 yeah. in the account. No. So they're not going to come and withdraw uh, 100,000 naira. 
And then for those who are withdrawing 100,000 Naira, because each person who comes to withdraw is withdrawing from user account, then you are going to keep track of who is holding the notes. But the most importantly, you have two weeks effectively to the election. So even if people come back and withdraw 100,000 this week and 100,000 next week, they will end up with 200,000 Naira before the election. I don't think that's the kind of money that we are worried about in terms of compromising the electoral process. So they can kind of loosen the tightness of cash supply without necessarily compromising the overarching objective of the central, gov central bank and the federal government to make sure that this coming election is not compromised by unethical politicians who are bent on buying uh, the conscience of Nigerians just because they have uh, used poverty, we have weaponized poverty. Now, let's take a look at another dimension which came up um, on Monday. The, uh, the um, federal, high, uh, federal Capital Territory FCT <laughs> High Court restraining uh, President Buhari, governor of the Central Bank, and 27 commercial banks from suspending the Naira redesign. We also saw the conference of political parties, I think, coming out yesterday with a press conference. What else again? I think there was a protest too at the headquarters of the Central Bank of Nigeria. I heard by, you clearly. By those who say they, they, they say support, should not shift. Yes, that is support. What is your reading of all this? Uh, let's bring in a bit of political economy uh, into it, which you started with anyway, in terms of there's a political angle to it. But the Apex Bank is saying, get us out of politics. We are not interested in your politics. This is, this is inhibiting our country policy objectives, and we need to do it. You can't have that cash out of the system, so we need to draw everything in and bring back again. But with what you've seen in the last few days, <laughs> how do you sum all this up? Meanwhile, there's a political party which the president belongs to crying foul as it, as it were. Other political parties, the conference and all of that, okay, we support you guys, we support you guys. Don't. What's your reading of, of all this? And just oppose it with the hardships that Nigerians are actually feeling at this time. Because this is one policy that you've seen Many politicians, the big men, come out to say, no, shift to this date. And I haven't seen politicians be so united <laughs> on an issue such as yeah, on another issue. It's a nasty, with all due respect to Nigerian politicians, we have had a political culture that has encouraged impunity, that has encouraged breach of this public interest, uh, where it's being uh, driven by the money banks, or what you may call the political, what do they call them, the kingmakers. Huh? Uh -huh. So, uh, and that process is highly uh, based on compromising the electorate or compromising even the umpire. We've heard repeatedly that people give money to INEC, people give money to police, give, people give money to all this and that to ensure that the electoral victories, yes, or the results are changed, or somehow, in effect, that the result is manipulated. It doesn't reflect the in interest or the outcome of voting at the polling unit. We have yet too many of that. This, and we've also known that politicians, in their own warped strategy, include as a critical component of their strategy to compromise the electorate. I was talking to a politician and uh, said, how does this work? And he told me, you know, you have pooling agents, you have the pooling agents of the opposition party, you have police, you have an NEC official, you have uh, a, about six or so of such interests at the pooling unit. And he said, you know, you have to, for them as politician, you have to mark out some amount of money for each of these. And if you can also give money to the agents of your opposition party, particularly if the opposition party is not strong in that area. So that at the end of the pooling, after the pooling, they will look at what is the number of registered voters in this pooling booth. What was the actual pooling? They now allocate whatever is not voted, uh, uh, pulled to you based on the fact that you have compromised everybody. Which, what be, which is what Bifas is was there to, to twat. So, and given that, you know, initially the politicians didn't want, unfortunately, I don't know how God blindfolded them and they approved. They be <laughs> so now they are now trying to push back. We've heard comments 
from political leaders of the ruling party talk about cast aspersion on the viewers and also they've told us that he has not been they're not sure it will work they've told us when the, the electoral act was being passed that there was no coverage of network in their localities even if when i know that some of the localities have 4g network they've said that to us all because if they don't have they didn't want that this to be implemented so what was the next option of them they have begun to stack up money in preparation because they know that they can't go to the uh, banks a few weeks to the election so they had begun to stack up money i saw something on twitter as i was coming here of uh, i don't know how true it is but on the twitter uh, the person was saying his friend who is a house of rep member was complaining that he had he had kept 238 million naira and he doesn't know how to take it back to the bank and he cannot use it for the election i don't know like i said mm -hmm. it's not uh, something that somebody posted on on twitter but the the fact of the matter is that we all know you and i and the politicians know that many of them had dug up a lot of liquidity ahead of the election mm. okay now so the, i'm coming yeah. so the, the reason why they are fighting it why you're having conference of the uh, why you're having uh, some state govern, government going to court mm. to compare central bank to reverse a policy and i say look sometimes what we what would play here uh, is it beggars logic how can you go to a film court to give a judgment to stop a man from doing his primary job? Now, let's, we just have two minutes to the end. And I want to bring in this. Concerning the super agents and how you think the central bank can actually work with super agents across the country. Some people have said it's not enough. In fact, I got a message from a colleague yesterday uh, telling me that, okay, that the CBN should look at even deploying more super agents across perhaps FCT and other places to help with the the cash circulation what other recommendation would you give to the central bank of nigeria in terms of this and should they wield the big stick against the banks moving forward just very quickly so that this situation can be abated before the elections nancy chief the, chuku the payment architecture we have in the country was sufficient to dispense old naira notes before the introduction of the new dis the design notes it is not because our payment architecture has collapsed. Mm. And I have said here, let the central bank this evening give instructions to allow over the counter payment up to 100,000 naira a week or withdrawal of 100,000 naira from POS terminal. We will have enough dispersed payment platforms. The queue will not be too much. It will not be there. It will vanish in two days. It's not a matter of deploying more super agents. Mm. That's uh, it's a, a, an ad hoc fire service approach. Mm. We can solve this problem today. And like I said, even the amount of money that will go out, central bank should know how much money has gone out. Okay? And if we, are, we, we don't have up to 320 billion have gone out, if it hasn't gone out, based on my estimate that they may have printed 320 billion, then let's push it further. The money that will be released if you have a limit withdrawal of 100,000 naira in the next two weeks will be inconsequential as to compromise the election and will solve this problem. Thank you very much, Chief Chuku. <laughs> thank you very much for your insights today uh, but of course one thing remains clear that we can't continue to see this long queues for a very long time so the cbn has got to fix it and they really have got the power to be able to fix it thank you for your insights again all right i've been speaking with uh, john sinchuku who is uh, the group managing director carrier asset management we've been looking at the naira redesign policy and uh, the furore around it i hope you don't still have the old naira you go deposit it at your banks you have about a few more days to the deadline i'll see you all again next time i am nancy najibi the best you can be a bit of change that you want to see right now